So I'm going to explain the pros and cons of investing in terraced houses. Now I own a number of terraced houses from our Buy to Let Investments and I can tell you that they come with a lot of advantages, they come with a lot of disadvantages. They can be a pain in the arse and they also can be very rewarding. Now if you're new to property investing or you're just starting out building a portfolio, then there's a pretty good chance that you're going to come across investments that are terraced houses. And there is a very good reason for this, and that being is they are the lowest entry in terms of getting into property because more often than not, they are the cheapest properties to buy. So for example, a two-bed terraced house is probably one of the cheapest property types that you can buy. They're also very sought after in terms of rentals because again, they're a low entry for not only buyers, but also renters. So this brings me on to the pros of owning terraced houses as buy to let investments. Firstly, the entry point, you can buy the house with probably the lowest deposit that you will find out of any property investment. For example, you can pick up terraced houses from 70, 80, 90,000 pounds upwards, meaning that you only need a deposit of around 25, 30,000 pounds. There are also a lot of these type of houses available, especially in northern regions. There are a lot of streets of terraced houses so they are readily available and one of the most important factors one of the biggest pros of investing in terraced houses is you'll probably find that the rental yield is a lot higher than it would be with three four bed family homes or apartments or things like that so more often than not you will find that lower priced properties generate the higher yields now i've had some very good success by buying two and three bed terraced houses over the years and I will continue to buy them. However, I do have a lot more knowledge now. I do have a lot more experience with them. So there are a lot of things that I now look out for that I know what I'm doing. Whereas before, I may have gone into this a bit naive, a bit uneducated. So I didn't spot the warning signs, didn't spot the dangers. So hopefully in this video, I'm going to relate these to you so that you have a better understanding when you go to view these kind of properties. Now, in terms of rental yield, I'm achieving seven eight nine percent yield on my terraced houses so this kind of takes us into the pros the advantages of buying buy to let um, terraced houses so just to list them quickly a low entry point so you only need a smaller deposit to get involved they are relatively cheap probably the cheapest type of house that you can buy they are usually readily available not too difficult to get hold of as the houses are quite small it means that maintenance costs are kept to a minimum they're also very sought after because again rent on these properties are also quite low in comparison to other types of houses so the fact that people are renting houses is a good indication that they don't have money saved up so they are looking for cheaper alternatives therefore terraced houses are an ideal suit for them other advantages are due to the low entry point it's quicker and easier to build a larger portfolio and i've also found that it attracts a varied range of tenants so this could be anyone from a single person um, a family with children elderly people single people older couples pretty much anybody will rent a terraced house i've also found that a lot of terraced houses are situated on the outskirts of town which puts them in a good location especially for transport links and city centre access. So if you're thinking of getting into buy to let, if you're thinking of investing in your next property, then I would recommend that you seriously consider terraced houses. Now don't get me wrong, it's not all glitz and glamour with terraced houses. They do come with their problems and I'm going to outline them now. So straight off the bat, most terraced houses are going to be around 100 years old, some even older, which means the way they were constructed is obviously not as advanced as it is today so what we find is with terraced houses they come with some issues and i found this to be true with every terraced house that i've ever been to view and that is they are susceptible to damp mold and condensation issues now there's just no getting around this for a lot of terraced houses because of the period in which they were built and the way they were constructed so when viewing terraced houses i'd highly recommend that you take a lot of care Take notice of the interior walls, especially under windows and around chimney breast. Just feel them with your hand to see if they feel cold or damp. Also take a moisture meter reader with you so that you can test the moisture of the walls. One of the biggest issues that I've found with my current tenants in terraced houses, especially when there is a family in there, so there's more than two or three people, is the fact that condensation buildup is quite bad. It is an issue. So what I do now, having learned this over the years is 
When I purchase a new terraced house, the first thing that I do is I ensure that the ventilation is as good as it possibly can be. And by this, I mean, we need the air to be circulating around and through the house. We need bad air exiting the house. We need good air coming into the house, which will massively prevent and help with condensation issues. With condensation, when you're breathing out, when people are having a bath or cooking, the warm, moist air is then attracted to colder surfaces, which in this case of a terraced house, it's usually one of the walls. So it's always good to improve ventilation. And what I do for this is I install extractor fans in the bathroom, humidity fans in the kitchen. I also install PIV units in the loft, which pumps clean air into the house permanently. So all of these things help. Also educate your tenants. Let them know that it's good to have the windows open a little. It's good to have doors open. It's good to keep things away from windows so they don't attract moisture. Now I know that damp and mold issues have been known to put a lot of landlords off. I know that people have sold up because they don't want to deal with the issues and problems that come with old terraced houses. However, if you learn and understand how these houses are constructed, what causes these issues and then how to fix them, then the problems really aren't that bad. A lot of people presume that it's a big massive job to sort out damp and mold issues when really it isn't. You just have to understand how it works to then know what you're doing. A lot of people will try to charge you a fortune to fix these issues but again it doesn't have to. So this for example here, this wall was really really damp, really wet. So what I did was I sorted the issue out outside, I then had the plaster knocked off inside, had the wall tanked, moisture boards fitted and then replastered. And this didn't cost me much at all, probably a few hundred pounds at most for all of the work in and out. So although a lot of landlords, a lot of people would have just left it as it was and let the problem get worse over time. I like to get things sorted. I like to get things fixed to save me this problem, to save me the hassle in the future. Now, another issue with terraced houses is a lot of them are not that energy efficient, again, because the way they were constructed. So with the new EPC laws potentially coming in, there's only so much you can do to a terraced house to increase its EPC rating, such as loft insulation, um, improvement on the boiler, LED lights, things like this. You can't actually insulate the walls because it's a terraced house. Most of them are just solid brick. So you will encounter problems when it comes to this. However, I'll do a completely separate video on EPCs and what you can do to rectify this and what you can do to get around it. Now another disadvantage to terraced houses are they are quite small. So what I found is when I have had families or young couples who are having children, they don't usually stay for more than two or three years because their family is extending. However, the house becomes too small. So then they move out. So please be aware of the type of tenant that you get in because ideally you want a very long-term tenant. Now if you get a young couple in your terraced house and they start having children, then they're going to quickly outgrow the house and you will be forever refurbing, getting new tenants in. Another disadvantage, doesn't always have to be a disadvantage, but the thing with the terraced house is they're obviously connected to neighbours, both sides. More often than not, you'll find that your tenant has a problem with one of the neighbours or one of the neighbours has a problem with your tenant or something will happen somewhere along the line. Again, this just can't be helped. If issues do arise with neighbours, then try to talk to them, try to rectify the problem yourself. Be understanding with not only your own tenants, but with the neighbours surrounding your property. And more often than not, you can sort the issue out yourself without involving any authorities or anybody else or without your tenant leaving. Now, another thing I found with terraced houses, a lot of them are owned by landlords already. And what I find is a lot of landlords who are coming to the end of their year, so to say, I've noticed that they haven't put much care into the properties over the last decade or two. So you may find that there are issues with the roof, the chimney, the pointing, general structural issues. So always look out for things like this. Use it to your advantage. If you do spot problems, then use this to negotiate a lower price on the property. Obviously, terraced houses are very old, so things are going to go wrong. Things are going to happen where you need to replace or fix them. Now, a roof is probably one of the most costly things that you can encounter, so make sure that that is in good standing order. Also, things like electrics may need replacing. The plumbing may not be up to much because, again, it's really old. So these are the things you need to keep an eye out for when viewing these type of properties. Now, as I said at the start, don't let this put you off because, as an example, the last terraced house that I purchased, I agreed a price of £100,000 for this house and I actually ended up buying the same property for £80,000. So I got a £20,000 reduction off the original agreed price simply because 
The survey was done um, by the lender. They found some issues, again, damp and timber issues. So we had to have a damp and timber survey done and it came back with all these issues. So I went back to the vendor. Anyway, we negotiated another price down to £80,000. So I got the property for £20,000 less. Now it certainly hasn't cost me £20,000 to rectify the problems. As I always say, problems can be fixed, issues can be resolved. More often than not, they're not as expensive as you would originally think. So I hope this video has helped. So I hope this quick video has helped. Terraced houses can be a great investment. Don't let the issues put you off because terraced houses are a great entry level into property investing. They produce really good yields and return on investment. And they're usually very sought after in terms of rentals. So building your strategy around terraced houses is a great way to get going. It's certainly one that I've used over the last few years to build my portfolio. But just remember to learn how these properties are built, how they are constructed, what causes issues. And then when you go to view these type of properties, you'll know exactly what you're looking out for.